to recap the uh, Washington State game. It was uh, it was a film yesterday, and a lot of things that we could get better at. A lot of things we did well. It was a good win on the road and inclement weather. And uh, so we uh, we watched it this morning, and now we're moving on to the next game, Saturday, big game. Obviously, a lot of ramifications. Exciting week. I think it's important for this football team that we. Uh, amongst all the hoopla, do the best we can of uh, sticking to our routine and staying focused on the moment and uh, going out and having good practices and uh, focusing on what's important and that's executing well on Saturday. So that's going to be our focus and uh, try to minimize distractions as best we can and, and, and normalize this week as best we can. So that's what I've talked to the team about so far. Does the NFL experience help normalize things? Because it doesn't seem like there are the week-to-week -week emotional swings that there are maybe in college football. Well, it helps me, but I don't know about the kids. I'm just in, ter know. in terms of you guys imparting that to the players. Yeah, we try as best we can. But, you know, I think it's important to remember that these are still young men that are, you know, they are still developing their personalities. But uh, I think as coaches, if we can, if we can keep it normal and we can stay focused, that it will certainly help the players. You know, I'm sure you thought about this week when you took the job, but now that it's finally here, are you excited? Well, I didn't think about this week when I took the job, but I am excited. Is, is not being you know, from the system, not being along, that sort of thing, does that help you look at this as more of a game and not the USC game? I just think it's important that you, regardless of opponent, that you treat every game the same. I think if you become inconsistent with how you prepare or the emphasis you put on each game, you become an inconsistent football team. Um, it's hard to ignore the importance of this game, but that doesn't mean that it has to be the primary focus for it. I think if you do that, you do a disservice to your football team, to your players, to your staff, to your university, and people that support you. So uh, we understand the significance, but we're going to try to normalize it as much as possible, which will be impossible. <laughs> How do you do that? How do you minimize distractions for your team, not for you? <laughs> uh, stick to the routine. You know, we meet at the same time, we practice at the same time, we talk about the same things. You know, talked about this morning about uh, there's there's been a formula that's got us to this point, and let's stick with it. You know, study when you usually study. Uh, make sure you attend your classes and pay attention. Uh, go to your tutoring and your mentoring appointments. Uh, the hours that you have de dedicated throughout the season to football, you know, off the field, dedicate those to football. Don't get caught up in all the hype, you know. Focus on what's important, and that's the process. That's having a great practice on Tuesday, great practice on Wednesday, great practice on Thursday, great practice on Friday, and then playing on Saturday. Do you specifically even suggest that they don't read the media, don't read news? No, I haven't done it all year, so I'm not going to do it this week. I don't think they read much. I think they, they're, oh, I, I think what they read is their textbooks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, these kids are very busy. And they really are. We keep them busy. They're busy with their schoolwork. You know, uh, this is not an easy school to succeed in academically, so they're very busy that way. And uh, I don't know that they have, you know, they, they have other things that they do in their downtime. Not getting caught up in all the hype. Is that a little hard for a 18 to 22 year old to enforce when that's all he's going to hear all week? We started hearing it last week on campus. Yeah, but. Uh, I, I just feel like our team has a level of maturity right now at this point in the season that's going to help them, even though we're an extremely young team. I, mean, I looked out there on Saturday night in the third quarter, there were six freshmen on offense playing most of the game. But they've been playing, and I just think there's a level of maturity. I think it's a, they listen to us as coaches when we ask them to ignore the hype, and they do the best that they can. I know they're excited, though. I mean, they should be excited. It's an exciting time. They're 8-2 and, and they have a chance to, you know, play our cross-town rival for a chance to
go to the Pac-12 championship. They should be excited, but they still have to keep it in perspective. We can't. We've got to focus on the process. The process is I'm just proud of the program uh, and that we put ourselves in this spot. I think a lot of credit needs to go to Dan Guerrero and the resources he's given us and his coaching staff, but especially the players. Um, they've worked hard since the spring. They've stayed focused. Uh, they've done everything we've asked them to do, and so they put themselves in this position. You know, I don't think about it personally. You know, myself, I just I don't think that way. You know, I just try to do my best every day. Do you have any, any external thoughts of this rivalry from afar over the years before you took the job? Only one time, and that was 1974 when I was here as a 12-year-old and my dad was coaching. And it was in the Coliseum. Uh, but, no. Do you remember anything from that game? Uh, yeah, I remember that Wendell Ty Tyler tore his bicep muscle. Or maybe it was his whatever this muscle is. He tore off the bone in that game. That's probably the only memory of that game. What do you think it means for the program to be playing a game that's this meaningful this late in the season? I think it's great. I think it's great for the university. I think it's great for the program. You know, uh, when you're watching uh, the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Dallas Cowboys yesterday in national television, Troy Aikman's talking about being excited about this game. The whole nation's hearing it. They're running ads with Joe Fourier catching the ball and running in the end zone. I mean, it just, it gives us exposure that's important. It's important for the university. It's important for our future in recruiting. Uh, it's important for our kids that have worked so hard to get to this point. Uh, I'm happy for them. You know, I'm happy for the seniors on this football team that are getting to play in a game of this, of this magnitude. I think it's important for them. But, at the same time, I still tell you that it's important for them to focus on the process. How far will we win this game? It'll make us 9-2 and two and it'll give us a chance to go compete for the uh, Pac-12 championship. How about away from the field? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm getting a lot of pride of it. I think that, uh, you know, if we're fortunate enough to come out on top on Saturday, we'll, we'll see where it takes us. You guys are going head to head with USC on a lot of recruits. Um, from that aspect of it, how important is is this game? In terms you know of what? That? I, that's an interesting question. I thought about it, and I don't know the answer. You know, I don't know that if you win a game or lose a game, if a, if a recruit just flips, or if that, how much it means to them that a team wins a particular year. You know, it's probably on a case to case basis. So, but I did think I was thinking about that last night. And, we win or if they win, how much does that impact a specific recruit? I, I just don't know the answer. If it were you coming out and you were at that game, how <clears throat> would be the... Well, I would hope that my parents would uh, <clears throat> keep me in check. And, uh, you know, whether I was leaning towards UCLA or USC, that I would look at the big picture, not just one particular game. That's what I would advise my kid to do. Mm -hmm. The direction of the program. And, you know, the other things that, that attracted me to the program. You talked about Barkley a little bit yesterday in the teleconference. <clears throat> how, aside from experience, how does Brett, how do they compare, I guess, in that way? I, I don't think it'd be fair to Brett to compare him to Matt Barkley. You know, Matt Barkley has done so many things in college football and had so much success. And Brett's just beginning his career here at UCLA. He's only played 10 games, you know. Um, but I think this, I think that uh, there are some comparisons in that, you know, I've said this about Brett a lot. I think Brett's a very good decision maker. I think Brett plays, plays with a lot of poise. Um, and I think Brett is able to put a good player or a bad play behind him and move on. And uh, I don't know Matt Barkley personally, uh, but when I watch him play and I listen to him on TV and uh, just my general impressions of him is that he's probably the same type of guy. I know he's an excellent decision maker. Uh, and I would imagine just from watching him that he's very, very poised and a great leader. He's got the captain on his chest, so obviously his teammates think he's a great leader. And uh, I don't think you, you have the success that he's had without being able to put good plays and bad players behind you and go on. I have a lot of respect for him. I think he's a great quarterback who's got 
a tremendous future in the NFL. What else impresses you about their offense? You've talked about Mark in the past, but what, what stands out to you as a defensive coach? Well, Obviously, Barkley and the, and the receivers. I mean, the receivers are special. I think both of those guys. Uh, I was trying to think who who I who I compare Marquise Lee to, and then I watched Andre Johnson yesterday. Now he's not as big as Andre. He's the same type of athlete and impact type of player. He's rare. I mean, they don't come along very often like this guy. He's something special. He he would be an impact player right now at the next level. Not just a player, but an impact player. Uh, I think they've got three receivers that are really good. Uh, they're a little bit more uh, unconventional than I thought before I started looking at film. I, I had the impression that I was just going to see a strict West Coast offense formula, and they don't do that. They do a lot of things. They, they've become, well, I don't know if they've become or if they've always been, but they are a little bit more uh, complex than, than I thought they'd be, which is a credit to Langley. You know, and adjusting, and uh, they play hard. You know, they hit the big play. Um, it's a really good, solid football team. They run the ball well. They throw the ball well. Matt Barkley, he's the guy that makes it go. He knows where to go with the ball, and he gets it out of his hand quickly. Have you played a player like Lee this year, or is he on no. like anyone you've seen? No, <laughs> he's a, that guy is. You know. We, 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 there's some, I don't even know what the award was, but some award I had to vote for last week, some player of the year award. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he was on the ballot. And we got three votes, and I can tell you that my top two votes were two guys that have been playing in this game this week. I'm not going to tell you who was one and who was two. You can probably figure it out. Jonathan Franklin was the other one. So, but I think that. Uh, I, I, you know, I've studied the NFL or studied college drafts for ever. And this guy, wow, wow. Where was Franklin on the one, two, three? <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you that I voted for my guy number one and their guy number two. I think they're both going to be great players at the next level. I think they're, I think they're both great representatives of their university too. You're giving the youth of this, your team how much you get to be relying on. Well, we always rely on those guys. You know, they've been here and they've done that. And, uh, you know, whether it's this game or any other game, we rely on those guys. You know, they, uh, they've been through the fires. And uh, it's important to them. And they're kind of an uncharted territory here with regards to our record. And it's important to them. And, uh, you know, I've always felt like peer-to-peer -peer accountability is one of the strongest things you can have on a team. And so that... Uh, the fact that our younger guys uh, feel a sense of responsibility to help our older guys achieve their goals before they leave this university is really important. And I feel like our younger guys have embraced that responsibility. Okay? All right, thank you very much.